Hello everybody and welcome back to the ASUS North America YouTube channel. This is JJ once again and we're bringing something I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for. Uh, this is going to be a full overview on our brand new ASUS GeForce GTX 780 full non-reference, so directs you to graphics card. Um, the interesting thing that we're going to be covering in this uh, video though is that we have an entirely new design in terms of the heatsink and the fan assembly, as well as the introduction of an entirely new fan design uh, for this GPU as well. So going along with the full kind of non-reference attention to detail that you know that we bring to our graphics cards, um, this is going to be really a card that's going to kind of set the bar uh, for quite some time in terms of what you can expect for an outright super high-end base graphics card. So like always, we're going to cover a little bit of everything, uh, ranging from not only what comes included inside the box, as well as, of course, the topology, the power layout, the connectivity, uh, overall performance-based metrics, and things along those lines. We're going to pretty much give it to you all here in this overview video broken out so that you guys can get a bit of insight into our brand new ASUS GeForce GTX 780-based graphics card. I do want to make one contention point, though, quickly, is that for you guys that are going to be interested in all the high-end performance-based aspects, such as temperatures, acoustics, uh, gameplay, and things along those lines, make sure and check out our secondary video which will cover the performance aspects specific to this card. So with that, let's first go ahead and take a look at the accessories that come included with our ASUS GeForce GTX 780. Okay guys, we're going to get this out of the way quickly because the accessories are not the star of the show here. Um, so first off the bat, of course, we've got a power base adapter. So this is why you're going to go ahead and take uh, an 8-pin and go ahead and adapt it to two 6-pin PCI Express based power connections. Of course, you do want to make sure and hopefully be using a high performance based PSU. Uh, my recommendation is a minimum of 650 watt 80 plus uh, verified uh, power supply. Uh, from there, we've also got a, a, a longer than standard SLI ribbon cable. So for you guys that are interested in running two of these cards in SLI, now keep in mind, of course, uh, this card fully supports three-way configurations as well. Next up, pretty straightforward, we've got our quick installation guide. This gives you a bit of information on how to set up and how to install your uh, 780 graphics card. And lastly, we have our GPU tweak uh, software utility uh, software disk. Now, keep in mind that you do want to head over to NVIDIA's website to download the latest version of the GeForce drivers, as well as the GeForce Experience software. And for us, you can head over to support.asus.com and type in GPU tweak to get the latest GPU tweak version. And that's going to be critical for you guys that want to be able to tweak and tune the graphics cards in respect to voltage fan speeds, uh, check for VBIOS updates, uh, adjust uh, power target, or any of the other number of variables you can have to go ahead and enhance the performance and the functionality of this graphics card. So with that, let's go ahead and actually now take a little bit of a closer look at our ASUS GeForce GTX 780. Okay guys, so here we have the star of the show, the brand new ASUS GeForce GTX 780 DirectX 2 graphics card. Um, this is a really special card for us because it integrates a huge amount of work and time and effort that we've gone ahead and had on the internal side of our graphics division. Uh, we've actually been working on the entire new heatsink and fan assembly for actually over a year for this graphics card. Um, so there's going to be a lot of effort uh, that you're going to not necessarily see, but that's been really put into this card to be able to give you a whole another level of performance to really offer you kind of what we've come to feel uh, that we offer in this marketplace as far as offering the most uh, performance oriented, the most innovated, um, and you know, and, and, the, and the cards that really are going to give you the absolute best gameplay experience uh, for you guys that are interested in the top end PC gaming space. Um, now with that, uh, we haven't covered actually the 780 as a whole in a previous overview video, so we're just going to lightly touch on some of the features uh, and the base specifications of the chipset before we get into some of the actual specific design points of what separates our card, of course, from the reference based designs as this is a full non-reference based solution. Um, so if we take a look at here at some of the quick specifications that we can see here, um, you're taking a look really at a beast of a card. I mean, you're talking CUDA cores, it's 2304 in terms of the amount of CUDA cores that are on this card. This gives you an insane amount of processing capability in game. This is really targeted at you guys that are absolutely looking at that highest level of gameplay experience. You want the absolute highest level of image quality settings to be applied in game. And you're really focusing at not 1080p, but QHD resolutions to 2560 by 1440, or even actually newer uh, resolutions such as 4K uh, for monitors that we're releasing right now to the marketplace. Uh, of course, for you guys that are interested in 3D vision um, or 3D vision surround, this is also really targeted to you guys. So people that are looking kind of for the biggest, craziest, highest resolution based setups is really who's going to complement this. Now, if you're a 1080p based gamer, then of course still this CUDA course is going to help to drive the absolute highest level of frame rate uh, and also help to give you the overall smoothest gameplay experience, but optimally, um, you know, 2560 and greater is really where you're looking at, or multi-monitor multi gaming. 
Now in terms of the base clock, there's a little bit of a change here. The base clock for the reference design is 863 megahertz. Our base clock is actually overclocked. It's 941, but it's actually going to be significantly higher than that as our operating temperatures are actually up to 30% cooler than the reference design. So of course with this featuring the GPU Boost 2 technology, that means the cooler we can keep this card running, the higher it's going to dynamically overclock as well as keep that overclock much more consistent. So giving you much overall faster gameplay performance than the reference 780. Um, from there, you can of course see a couple of information points such as the memory speed. It's six gigahertz on the memory with three gigabytes of memory. That's outstanding for you guys, once again, that are looking for the high resolution based gameplay. And if you look at that memory interface, that pipeline that you have connecting uh, the GPU architecture as a whole to that six gigahertz memory, it's a super fat bus. We're talking 384 bit compared to your standard a 192 on kind of more basic oriented cards or 256 on your higher performing cards. So a huge amount of memory bandwidth to really just give you a whole nother level of gameplay experience and high resolution uh, textures are really going to kind of take advantage of that. Of course, uh, we'll talk about the rest such as support for 3D vision um, and uh, physics based technology, DirectX 11.1 and everything else when we start getting into some of the other characteristics of the connectivity and the display output. So with that, let's go ahead and actually jump into the card a bit and start to break it down for you some of the unique aspect points that we have on this card. Okay guys, so now that we've given you a little bit of a primer on kind of the GTX 780 and some of its performance specifications, we're going to actually talk a bit more of course about our full non-reference based solution. So as you guys know, reference designs are essentially what comes directly from NVIDIA in terms of not only the PCB design, the connectivity, uh, PR, PWM, VRM, um, all the componentry that's laid out on the board and even the cooling solution, that's all defined by them. Our goal with a non-reference card is ultimately give you a superior card in every respect. So we want it to be cooler, we want it to be quieter and ideally we'd like it to be faster. With this card you get every single one of those things plus some. Um, so if we take a look at the card in itself, of course it features an actually a, a, an entirely uh, revised ID design. So the ID is kind of that look and feel. We definitely wanted to keep this uh, classic in terms of going with the red and black aesthetic that we've set now for our DC2 oriented cards and that looks just outstanding. It's really clean, it's aggressive, um, but it's got some really nice lines to it that just kind of complement a modern enthusiast oriented based system. Uh, one of the things you're going to and definitely see that's a bit different from previous generations is that this is actually a slimmer card. It's actually only two slots. Historically, our highest end graphics cards that we've had on the market have been triple slot based solutions. Uh, for this generation, uh, we've utilized an entirely new 10 millimeter based heat pipe based design to allow us to go ahead and even have more mass, more surface area to go ahead and improve the heat conduction and the overall heat dissipation capabilities of the graphics card. And this is actually what's allowed us to go ahead and maintain the two slot based design while still hitting our target goal of being significantly cooler uh, and then working in conjunction with our brand new Cooltech fan, which is actually going to be this fan right here, the reason why it looks a little bit different than the secondary fan, of uh, being able to go ahead and give us not only a cool base experience, but a quiet base experience. Now, um, every single one of the aspects of this card has been adjusted essentially in terms of uh, being, being changed up from a non-reference design. So of course we have here not only an ID base changed, uh, the cooling design of course with it being a direct CU2 means that there's two fans that we have implemented here to be able to cool the card versus the single fan that's on a reference uh, that also happens to be a blower base fan. Now we'll get a little bit into more specifics uh, when we talk about the heatsink and the fan assembly and we separate it as to the new type of fan that we have here which is our Cooltech fan which is a hybrid based solution as opposed to a standard axial or impeller based fan um, or as a also opposed to a blower base fan and how that changes the characteristics of how it works in terms of airflow and how that benefits you guys as gamers. Um, the heatsink assembly, as I said, has also been changed over to support um, uh, more advancements that give us more surface area and you can kind of take notice of that right there in terms of that very large heat pipe that we have there at the top and we'll go more into that one of course when we break out the card. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and just give you a little bit of lay of the land, walk around the card, show you some of the connectivity and from there we're actually going to go into uh, showing you the differences on the inside, not only in terms of the PCB but we'll separate uh, the heatsink of the fan assembly and give you guys some perspective on the brand new DC2 thermal design in the heatsink fan assembly. Okay guys, so next up, pretty straightforward, we got our display output connectivity, it being an ultra high-end NVIDIA based solution, we know what to expect here. So we have four-way display output capabilities, so three monitors along with an accessory panel support. This is really great for you guys that are interested in running multi-monitor workflows. 
especially under Windows 8 environment, I really enjoy running actually at the live tile based system as well as my desktop, uh, a complimentary dual monitor based configuration. And of course, for you guys that are interested in high resolution and 3D support, that's fully supported here with high resolution support being offered and actually 4K uh, output, whether it's going to be through the display port or through the HDMI. Keep in mind though, for you guys that are interested in our brand new 4K PQ series monitor, that HDMI output is only going to support a maximum of 30 hertz and the DP will actually require a specialized driver um, but can operate in actually 4K 60 hertz. Uh, so that gives you a little bit of flexibility in terms of ensuring that in terms of all the connectivity you need for any type of display output kind of, kind of configuration, you're going to have that covered here on this graphics card. So let's go ahead and turn the card around take a look at the back plate. Okay guys, so taking a look here at the back of the card, you can see that this definitely um, meets the aggressive styling that we'd like to have on our high-end DC2 series cards. So we have a full metal back plate uh, that not only adds a really nice actually style to the graphics card, but also helps to act as a stabilizer to the overall PCB. Uh, this helps to add overall rigidity, and it can also partially serve to help to improve heat uh, dissipation uh, from the back plane on the PCB. So going here from the top, of course, we've got our PCI, excuse me, we have our SLI base connections. Uh, so this is going to be for you guys that are considering two-way or three-way uh, three SLI configurations for a GTX 780 graphics card. Um, of course, here you can see that we continue to have that real easy and ac uh, simplified access to being able to disassemble the GPU and get access to the core of it by just having those four spring tension based uh, screws in place where you can go ahead and just screw them um, and go ahead and service and access the inside of the card whether you want to reapply your own TIM or clean out the heatsink and fan assembly it makes the process significantly smoother. Now directly underneath here as well of course we continue to have those high performance SAP caps or those super alloy powered capacitors that we put directly on the back of the graphics card that make contact with the GPU to improve the overclockability and the stability of the graphics card underneath uh, its extended higher frequencies. Now, uh, directly there on the bottom, of course, we've got PCI Express Gen 3 base connectivity, which is going to go ahead and be complementary to any one of the current motherboards that we have in our Z87 or X79 series uh, line, as well as, of course, other, uh, other chipsets out there that support PCI Express. Now, if we move over here in terms of this section, we've got a little bit more going on there as well. Um, with these two sections, we have a little bit in terms of uh, kind of, a, I'd say, a modding-based focus, or for you guys that are really interested in taking that extra layer of detail uh, when you guys are working with your graphic card. Uh, from a direct standpoint, it's going to allow for direct um, uh, digital multimeters to be able to go ahead and reference key voltages. So if you want to verify that the voltage that's being supplied is correct or, uh, or if there's any variants that are loaded as you're overclocking the card, you can go ahead and do that. And for you guys that are taking advantage of our ROG Extreme Series motherboards that feature our VGA Hotwire technology, you can also go ahead and utilize these connection points for VGA Hotwire to maximize the overclockability by adding additional voltage to the graphics card. Now from here at the top, of course, we've got our power connectivity and that's going to be an 8-pin uh, PCI Express and a 6-pin PCI Express and directly underneath that we've got two sets of LEDs that go ahead and alert you to the fact of whether or not you're receiving power correctly or whether you've made the actual PCI Express power connections correctly. Uh, they will light red if not and they'll light green if they're good to go. So with that, let's actually go ahead and take uh, this card apart and take a much closer look at not only the non-reference power delivery aspects uh, but the heatsink and the fan assembly. Okay guys, so what we've gone ahead and taken apart uh, the uh, ASUS GeForce GTX 780 graphics card. As I noted to you earlier, only four screws to take this apart. A really simple and easy process to be able to go ahead and access and service this graphics card. A real big point when you compare that especially to the reference design, which I believe actually might be in excess of about 20 screws with different thread size. It'd be quite a bit more complicated to work with that. Now here, we talked a little bit earlier about the shroud and the changes to, that we have to the actual two fan base design that we have implemented. And uh, that's exactly what we're going to be detailing a little bit more for you. So you can see right here that this fan looks a little bit different. This is actually the same fan that we recently introduced on our ASUS GeForce GTX 670 DC Mini. Um, so this card has some very interesting characteristics. If we take a look here actually at our slide, you can see that we have actually have some different points of information showing you a blower based design. So this is what you would generally see on reference cards. Uh, then we have an axial face design, sometimes it's also referred to as kind of an impeller based design. And then here we have our kind of hybrid or our cool tick based design. And you can see that we have different types of properties. Um, a, a blower based design is actually can be very good at being able to dissipate um, overall heat 
and it can go and help to exhaust that outside of a chassis, but it has also a large issue in terms of being able to heavily uh, cool and dissipate a lot. It has to be moving at a very high level, and of course that causes it to be significantly louder um, because of course of its much higher RPM metric. An axle base fan is actually a pretty good value uh, in terms of has a very low acoustic footprint, has very good tone. Um, airflow isn't necessarily as solid. Uh, it will vary depending on the design, and we carefully select our type of fan designs to give us a great balance of not only acoustic tone but great airflow. Um, and also we tend to go with larger size fans to be able to improve that. Um, now lastly what you can see right here is kind of we have a combination here. We have a low acoustic footprint, a high amount of airflow, and we have multi-directional points of airflow. And that's what gives us a huge amount of flexibility with this card uh, that when working in conjunction with the large high performance high dissipation heat sink that we have underneath it really gives us this outstanding level of cooling performance. So if we um, check it out here, here you can have a little bit more a kind of visual aspect of how the actual airflow consideration works. And you guys can actually check out a video that we released uh, for the Cooltech base fan that gives you some perspective actually at how it works. But you can see right here that when the actual fan is moving, it's not necessarily actually clearing anything out. So here we have that downward firing action. So we're getting actually two additional points of overall airflow. Um, this really overall helps us to have much better thermal performance. Um, and as we noted, really that ends up equating to a significantly cooler level of operation. So that we have here. Now, of course, we don't have two of those because if we had the same actually airflow characteristic, we actually would create turbulence and interference. So that's the reason why this fan serves to actually be more of a complementary assist fan and work on the back end of the actual heat sink and fan assembly to aid in the dissipation capabilities. But overall, you're going to get a very cool and quiet experience with a carefully tuned fan curve. Um, you know, in my testing, I've generally seen a temperature performance between about 64 to about 67 C and uh, essentially almost near silent in terms of the overall operation. Um, now in some ambient environments, we've seen this and sometimes go up to a little bit higher temperature points of about 68 to about 70 C, but we'll talk more about that in our performance video. So with that, let's go ahead and move it around and take a bit more. Uh, of a look at the heat sink assembly in itself. And you can see right here, this is where we have a huge amount of differential. Um, for one, you're going to see just a huge amount of metal here. This is, has a huge amount of dissipation points. It's a very high density finned base heat sink and fan assembly. And right there, you can see that huge, massive 10 millimeter heat pipe. And this is actually part of the reason why the whole heat sink assembly uh, took us so long to develop, almost about a year in terms of the development, because this was very complex in terms of making, cre uh, to, to create it and machine it in a consistent high quality fashion. If you think about it, this actual internal mechanism is hollow and uh, as you increase its diameter and you make it fatter, it can be hard to ensure that it, may, it maintains a high level of integrity, um, especially if you're starting to bend it and play with it. Um, so this takes a huge amount of time and effort to be able to go ahead and give you what you have now, uh, which is this ultra high performance direct contact nickel plated heat sink assembly uh, with these high performance copper heat pipes that really just gives us outstanding cooling capability. Capability. As I noted earlier, the cooling performance really is outstanding even when you overclock this card. It's outright really a beast in terms of a thermal solution. And with this new revised design, it also allows us to really maintain that ethos of giving you an ultra cool, ultra quiet gaming experience that also is faster. Um, by keeping the actual GPU significantly cooler than the reference design, we can clock higher on top of the fact that we already have it overclocked, giving you faster uh, gameplay experience, more responsive, uh, with better frame latency. So overall, everybody wins uh, with this type of setup. So you can see right here we have a total of five heat pipes, this one ultra large heat pipe, uh, then supported by four additional heat pipes, uh, then when integrated and uh, brought into this large high performance finned base heat sink, which has significantly more dissipation area. Uh, as you can see right here, where we point that out to you, when you take a look at the dissipation area that we have on the reference card, it's going to be 1850 versus 4112. So we have a much, much larger surface area to be able to go ahead and spread that heat out across uh, to be able to give you a great cooling experience. So with that, let's go ahead and move into the non-reference power delivery aspects of the card and give you some insight in terms of what we're doing there. Okay guys, so next up here as uh, we have really kind of the whole 
R&D design of the show, the, the, the part that you normally don't see but definitely aids in giving you an overall faster, more stable, more reliable gaming experience uh, with improved overclocking as well. And that's going to be our non-reference power delivery and layout. Now this is actually a, a very carefully laid out board that has a, hard, a high degree of complexity. Um, we have, uh, of course, two ounce copper implementation in here along with a 10 layer PCB. Uh, keep in mind that our most advanced motherboards on the market only utilize an eight layer PCB. So this is a super complex and dense PCB design to be able to go ahead and fit all the advanced layout and design work that we have uh, to complement not only this ultra high performance GPU, but everything that we're doing from a non-reference based perspective. So. Um, if we take a look here, as you guys know, uh, we're big supporters of what we refer to as our digital power kind of design implementation, which we've coined Digi Plus VRM with SAP or our Super Alloyed Power Initiative. And uh, that's definitely shown to you guys here throughout the entire card. One, you can see that it looks really clean and really nice. And this is kind of the section that we really kind of want to focus in on to be able to help you guys see what we're doing from a non-reference based aspect. Um, so first off, you're going to see a huge amount of capacitors, and these are all our Super Alloy based capacitors. They're rated for 5K rated operation versus the industry standard of only 2K rated operation. So that's over twice the actual lifespan of those parts, giving you overall better reliability and improved lifespan. From there, next we have, of course, um, our inductors, or what people refer to as our chokes. Um, these are fully molded base inductors. Um, they're alloy based, so they provide higher efficiency, lower operating temperatures, and improved power output. And we actually have a higher count than that of the reference based design. Um, this reference, uh, de uh, the reference design only uses a six phase power distribution system. We're utilizing an eight phase power distribution system along with that digital controller, which helps to give us better accuracy uh, and overall maximize uh, the actual accuracy of how it manages the VRM assembly. Uh, so those are nice improvements. Now keep in mind that now all inductors you're going to also see on graphics cards are fully um, uh, what we refer to fully molded, that means the inside is actually hollow, and that can actually uh, increase the likelihood of having what's called electromagnetic interference and other aspects in relation to the card. So uh, when we take a look at that section right next to it, we also have what are referred to as our super alloy MOSFETs. These MOSFETs are ultra efficient, they're smaller in package, they have a lower temperature output, and they have a higher voltage threshold all around. They're big improvements in terms of the overall power componentry. And here you can see that pretty much we've just packed it to the gills and giving you a really clean layout to give you that outstanding level of power delivery. Now for some of you guys, you might be wondering, well, how does this also compare to some of the aspects of the reference based design? So I want to go ahead and show you guys uh, a little bit of a picture here so you can have some insight into this. Um, so here we're actually utilizing a high resolution image um, from a courtesy TPU uh, for this uh, resolution image of a reference based design. And what you're taking a look here is the actual uh, VRM section of this card. So that's an uh, expanded view of it. So we're just going to go a little bit into it and we're going to take a look at this section right here, which is where we have our inductors. And you can see right here these are what are for POS caps. Now the big difference you're going to have here is, is that these POS caps, uh, which sometimes people think are always better, that's not always necessarily the case. It comes really down to kind of when you're designing a card, what's the space constraints that you have to work within as well as other variables. Um, POS caps actually have a good benefit in terms of when you have low Z height. So that means you don't have a lot of vertical height and you need something that fits in, in that area uh, but can still provide a good level of power output. Um, so in our case, we don't actually have those restrictions. So we have on our card our 5K rated capacitors that actually have higher performance. These are rated for 300 and 30 as you can see and our 5k rated capacitors are actually rated if we take a look right here and you guys can see it there are 800 plus so that gives you quite a bit more power output capability per each one of those uh, and when you consider that also that we're running a higher inductor stage goes to give you a little bit of that insight to the total power delivery capability of our DC2 graphics card. We wanted to give you guys an outright beast of a card and that's what we did when we designed a super alloy power with the Digi Plus VRM. And speaking of the Digi Plus VRM, you can see that guy right there. That's what is giving us uh, all that outstanding power delivery and control capability on our card. Now rounding things out, 
out. It's not just putting these outstanding power components, it's also helping to ensure that they're stable and they're reliable. And the MOSFETs are the hottest running part of this entire board outside of the GPU. And that's also part of the reason why we take that extra care to also give you a full VRM heatsink uh, that we've gone ahead and removed just for purposes of showing you, um, but that goes directly over that to go ahead and aid in the cooling of that. And that also receives additional heat dissipation uh, benefits, of course, from the DC2 based design when that air is coming down and also going across that finned assembly. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and put together uh, the card and go ahead and give you a little bit of a wrap up and perspective on where this card sits in relation to LAN and how you can consider it in building a system. Okay guys, so we've gone ahead and uh, put the card together back together for you and we're going to wrap things up here. So uh, throughout the course of this overview, we've given you a little bit of perspective at not only uh, the card itself, kind of some of the performance specifications of it, uh, the accessories that come included, and of course a huge amount of information about the non-reference design aspects, including our brand new DC2 thermal design and our new heat pipe assembly, our DigiPlus power components, our SAP, and everything that makes this card essentially the best of the best when it comes to a non-reference ASUS uh, graphics card. Um, so in terms of the lay of the land, you know the 780 is pretty much almost the cream of the crop. We've only got one of the graphics card that sits on top of that, which is going to be the uh, GTX Titan. And to be honest, uh, the 780 is essentially going to actually offer you, uh, in some situations, even the same performance, if not better, especially if you're considering overclocking the card. The Titan still does have certain advantages, of course, of having even a larger frame buffer. And of course, we offer a time for you guys that are looking for the absolute highest level of performance and looking to tweak and tune that as well. Now keep in mind that there's a differential and the 780 supports only configurations of one, two, or three-way base configurations, while the Titan supports all the way up to four-way base configurations. Um, that being said, if you're pretty much looking for the best graphics card you can get in terms of having outstanding uh, frame-based performance, right? You want low latency, you want maximum image quality, you want ultra-cool temperatures, you want quiet operation, you want outstanding feature set, then really no look no further than this graphics card. Um, you know, the entire refresh that we've done here with the 770 uh, the 760 that recently launched and now the 780 really bring you the absolute best graphics card you can get on the market if you're an enthusiast PC gamer. So for you guys that are cranking it up at 1080p, pushing 2560 or even looking to our PQ panels and gaming at 4K, this is going to be the card that you're going to want to be interested in taking a look at. Uh, so as always, if you guys enjoyed the video, first and foremost, please make sure and subscribe, thumbs up and like it as well. If you've got questions, comments or feedback, make sure to go ahead and drop them here on the page or feel free to email me and I'll be back to you as soon as I can. You can also make sure and hit us up at our ASUS North America Facebook pages or our Twitter pages and we'll get back to you there if we can as well. So as always, thank you for watching and stay tuned for more.